Can sampling ever be morally wrong? Extal contains a sample of Evil at Play and its creator Steve Jeffries said this in a YouTube comment. Using somebody else's music for your own benefit is not morally right and has always been the problem with sampling and effectively stealing someone else's copyright. As you can hear, apart from the drums and the change in one beat of the rhythm, Extal musically is basically what we created. Our tune, our chords, our playing, her voice, but no recognition, no payment, no royalties for 30 years. Richard lifted our track in full and used it throughout Extel. So the morality of sampling and the line between using it creatively and just ripping off the original creator is often incredibly difficult to judge. But if we take a deep dive into Extel, not only will we be able to see clearly the differences between the two tracks, but more importantly, we'll also get a deep insight into the musical craftsmanship of possibly the most gifted electronic producer that's ever lived. Firstly, let's have a look at the drums. So he used a Roland R8. I found online these Roland R8 samples and I just simply selected them all and dragged them in to make a drum rack like this. And there's a link to these samples in the PDF that accompanies this video. <laughs> These are actually from a CR78 and the pattern is fairly simple. Here I'm actually using the amp envelope. So I've got full sustain and low release. So essentially the size of the MIDI note determines the length. It cuts off there because of that. So if it was longer, it has a different feel. That's something that's really nice to play with when you're doing drum programming. So the whole signature sound of this track is the sound of the tape it was recorded onto and just tons and tons of reverb. So I'm using Satin all over this track. It's my favorite tape plugin by Yuhi. There's a link to it in the PDF. But essentially I've got this preset Heavy Exciter which adds a lot of high end and I'm doing that in the EQ as well. And I'm really boosting the input if we hear it without the satin and without the EQ, so you can hear this kind of tape distortion, it's relatively subtle. And then the reverb I've got on Ascend, I'm using the Valhalla Vintage Verb throughout, but for this one I've got this one. The reverb he used was a quadroverb, which is kind of a classic noisy old reverb unit. So I'm trying to get close to that. So I suspect this is one of the closest ones. It might be Celtic Hall. So that's what's going into taking these sounds from fairly boring to the sound of the track. So then we have a big drum sound coming in. I used the Roland Cloud TR-808. I'm just using the kick drum. It's not quite like the original, it's a bit more weighty actually, but I like what it's doing. So again, I've got the satin and the and the reverb. So there's these two plugins throughout. Without these, it sounds like this. With the satin, it sounds like this. So that's really nice, isn't it? I reckon that's lovely. Again, I'm using this heavy excited preset, which does add quite a lot of high end, and I'm cranking the input and the output. and then lashings of reverb. So we've got 3.69 seconds of decay. Mix is really high, over 50%. Generally, you wouldn't put reverb on this kind of sound anyway, but you might put it on like that, but for this track. Then, so I never would have spotted this, and I didn't believe it at first when I read it, that this break is actually incredible bongo band Apache. With loads of reverb. I'm pretty sure that is the correct one. So what I did, I got that sample. I hit right click, slice to new MIDI track. That gave me this essentially which i've edited slightly and then i just picked out two sounds a kick and a snare that's all there is to it really um, matched with the hats it's like this 
and then with the 808 kit it's like this yeah this is a different hat it's just this eighth note with the same amount of reverb on and then here we have the two hats that we used before yeah it's quite subtle in the mix but um here the other hats aren't in and you can hear it and then we have this this pattern where we have the the open hat on the one two and the three So we've got this lovely 808 bass, which is made from a kick drum, but it's essentially a bass. Have it without the Valhalla. Oh, that sounds so nice. And it's just these two notes. It probably doesn't really need all that reverb, technically. then it's such a dreamy track you know when he made it he wasn't following any guidelines or rule books he was just playing experimenting and he probably never even thought that it would see a release so he just went with it and you know it's an iconic amazing track that stands the test of time okay i really want to get into the sample but first let's have a very quick look at the pad sound <laughs> What's going on here? Firstly, I got the chords from Ali Jameson, and to get the patch, I fired up my trusty chip synth OPS7. This is like the best DX7 plugin, in my opinion. There are other great ones, but this has an extra level of je ne sais quoi. They've really modeled every little thing, and it just sounds great. And then I just got a patch that was vaguely similar. really nice bit of sound design in the patch actually and then I whacked an auto filter on it which I think sounds really nice it's got a real boards of Canada vibe to it the chords really feel like he was just experimenting so we've got this chord which is a B flat major but then we have this chord which is like a kind of suspended chord or something. And I just feel like it's the sort of thing you get by playing rather than by thinking about things technically. And then we go to this inversion of a chord. Just for fun, I was playing about with adding some different chords, and it's just fun, interesting to hear how the vibe changes so much. <laughs> I think that's really nice. <laughs> I'm not saying it's better or anything, but it's quite cool to have a play about. It's got such a boards of calendar feel that so let's just have a little listen to the original track and then we can really see how close they are that is essentially it towards the end we get this kind of noise comes in there are there's some laughing I mean, it kind of has a lot of Aphex Twin vibe in it, if I'm honest. <laughs> that kind of evil <laughs> side. <laughs> That's the original. Obviously in x it's pitched down. So if we just listen to the more straightforward use of the sample, it's the vocal. So this is very straightforward. It's just pitched down just from the beginning of the track and it's just going from the original key which is in C but he's just pitched it down to semitones 
And then here, there's an extra note here. So that's why this isn't playing it up a pitch. I've set this to be a different zone. So that's really nice. I like the way this leads back into that. And that's just starting the sample here. So it's, it, it's fairly simple, but it's quite nifty. It's very effective in my opinion. So now let's look at the main pad sound. So I was so lucky to find this video about it because otherwise I think it would have been really tough because it's not obvious. It's something, it's, it's about 16 seconds in. So it's about here on the original. It's got that little, <laughs> and it's got a... But then it's playing this three notes at once, which makes it very difficult to work out. So I'm very glad someone else did that hard work for me. So we've got, yeah, just that part of the track. And playing this kind of a chord. And then underneath we've got this. So if we listen to that in isolation. I mean, to me, that really shows the beauty of sampling. It's really a marriage of creativity. You can't say that without Aphex Twin, the tune is just the same, but also without the original sample, the tune wouldn't exist because so much depends on it. There's so much texture and movement and stuff going on that is achieved relatively simply. Oh, to me, it just shows how cool sampling is. <laughs> Just listen to that without this bit. And how the little bells come in, and these are a bit longer, so we get a bit more bells. Got this variation. So like everything else, I've put this satin on it, it's boosting the high end, and it's got a nice long reverb, Valhalla, Chaotic Chamber. So we'll listen to it without. So the effects are doing a lot, mainly the reverb, but also the tape. I mean, that is just make it a lot louder but the, the combination. It's just so nice, isn't it? So to me, it's absolutely clear. It's not fair to call Xtal a complete rip off of Evil at Play but it does really depend completely on it and it wouldn't exist if it weren't for this sample. The sample is just bringing so much timbre and movement and life and mood to this track. Let me know what you think. Whether we use sampling or not when we make our own tracks, it's so easy just to start something, make a loop and then get stuck. But arranging a track doesn't have to be rocket surgery. It's can be quite simple as demonstrated by Orbital on their track Chime. Check it out here.